everyone, you welcome back to our channel, Kemi's International. It's a pleasure to have you back in class tonight. Well, of course, we've been off screen for a couple of weeks, owing to the fact that we've got to have a break uh, in relation to, uh, you know, having um, refreshments concerning uh, the spiritual and the psychological well-being of ourselves. So we've got to, we've got a break of three to four weeks. So without wasting any of our time tonight, we want to look at a topic very important in chemistry. Uh, the importance can never ever be overemphasized. For this night, we're going to be looking at electrolysis. And basically, these are the objectives of the class. Of course, you know, we cannot give you, uh, solve any problem in, in chemistry as regards this class, as regards chemistry international, without giving you what the objectives of the class is all about. So tonight, we're going to be looking at the definition of basic terms in electrolysis. If we are able to finish that, we look at the um, um, factors affecting the preferential or the selective uh, discharge of ions during electrolysis. But to start with, at the initial, we'll be looking at the definition of terms. In electrolysis, you must know at least five different terms at least five different terms the first of which is electrolysis the second electrolytes the third electrode the fourth electrolytic cell and the fifth discharge of ions you must understand you must understand what the meaning of these terminologies are so we're going to be starting with electrolysis. Electrolysis. There are two keywords, two root words that make up electrolysis. First of which is electro. The second one is lysis. Right? Put these two words together, you get electrolysis. What does the, what do these two words mean individually? Electro means passage of electric current. Lysis means breakdown, decomposition. So bring the two meanings together you get the composition of something through the passage brought about by the passage of electric currents. The composition of something, and as long as we're talking about chemistry, we're looking at chemical substance. So electrolysis is the decomposition of chemical substance brought about by the passage of electric currents through the molten state or the aqueous solution of the substance. What do we mean? Electrolysis will not happen. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. When the substance that the electric current wants to pass through is not is neither in aqueous state nor molten form. When the substance is neither dissolved in water, for instance, your common salts conduct electrolysis. Your common I mean, conduct electric current. Your common salts can undergo electrolysis. You understand? That simply means your common salt can break down into its corresponding ions when it is allowed, when it is brought in contact with the passage of electric current. But it cannot conduct electric current in solid state. It cannot perform the role of an electric light in solid state. So it's, it must be in melting form when it is being heated and it is melting, or when it is dissolved in water, in aqueous solution. So electrolysis is the chemical decomposition, or is the decomposition of a chemical substance brought about by the passage of electric currents through the molten states or the aqueous solution of the substance. Electrolysis. Help we understand what that is all about. The second is electrode electrode. When you look at your battery, for instance, you see that your battery produces electric currents. Alright? Of course, your normal battery, the ones you use in remote control, alright? The ones you, you, you use in remote control such as this is an electrochemical cell. Why? Because it converts chemical reaction into electric currents. Of course, this electrolytic cell we are talking about 
is you know it converts electric energy into chemical reaction into chemical energy all right so electrode if you look at this battery you will see if you open it you process it you will see a rod a carbon rod inside that carbon rod is what is termed electrode that carbon rod is what is termed electrode that's why they define electrode as a rod or wire through which electron or electric currents leaves or enters the electrolytes right it's what a rod a rod whenever you want to define what uh electrode is all about you should remember this rod it's a rod or wire through which electron or currents all right enters or leaves the electrolytes all right there are some chemical substances within the electrolytic cell which are called electrolytes all right so the means that conducts the i mean the electrons or that allows the electrons to enter or leaves the electrolyte is termed electrode. Of course, basically, we have uh, the types of electrode that you should know about. Types of what? Types of electrode. In an electrolytic cell, we have basically the cathode and what? And the anode. And the anode. Electrolysis. The topic, one of the topics as a prerequisite for electrolysis is acid base and salt. Under acid base and salt, you must have come across what cations and anions are all about. You must have come across what cations and anions are all about. So, in an electrolytic cell, in an electrolytic cell, there is a cathode and there is an anode. The cathode is where the cations cations migrate migrate to the cathode to the cathode cations migrate to the cathode cathode cations electrode cathode cations electrode so the cathode cations migrate to the cathode you can complete this anions migrate to the anode all right and the cathode redu reduction takes place Reduction takes place. All right. This is also one of the topics that you must have been taught as a prerequisite to electrolysis. Redox reaction, reduction oxidation. All right. All right. I want to quickly take us back to a mnemonic device for we to understand what reduction is all about. A redox reaction. You know, we have the oil. And weak reduction is the gain, oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain of electron, oxidation is loss of electron. So, reduction takes place in the cathode. Of course, since we said we know what reduction is all about, gain of electron, it means that cathode is the what is the electrode that allows electron. To enter the electrolyte. Since reduction is gain of electron, of electron, yes. So cathode means that it means that cathode allows electron into the electrolytes. Alright? Or electron enters the electrolyte through the cathode. Alright? So you know we can conclude this. Anions migrate to the anode. Oxidation. Oxidation. Are we on the same page? Oxidation. Oxidation takes takes place. As for the what? As for the anode. Electron leaves oil. Loss of electron. Electron leaves the electrolytes. Electron leaves the electrolytes. Through 
through the canoed canoed through the canoed so we have these types of these two types of uh electrode these two types of what electrode the cathode and the anode it is also expected for you to be able to differentiate them it is expected for you to what to be able to differentiate them are you there so the fourth difference between cathode and anode if you remember i said electron or current enters or leaves the electrolyte it simply means it is not only electron alone that we'll be talking about in electrode we also talk about what Ele electric current all right now it's just the reverse if the if electron should enter the electrolyte through a particular electrode current in reverse will leave the electrolyte through the particle to the same electrode in this case now the cathode allows electron into the electrolytes it therefore means a uh, current current leaves the electrolytes all right through this cathode and current enters 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 what the electrolyte through the anode we've talked about what electrolysis means we've talked about electrode we've looked at the different electrodes the types of electrodes that we have as far as the electrolytic cell is concerned we have the cathode we have the anode we've talked about their characteristics their differences we should be able to distinguish them along what line cathode cations migrate into cathode are we on the same page anions to anode of course when cathode, uh, cations migrate to the cathode you know cations are positively charged for instance ion 2 plus it is positively charged the discharge of ions when it's want to get discharged you have then there should be plus two electron for you to have your ion as a solid so it means that uh in cathode there is what reduction which is electron gain in this reaction now you can simply see that there is an electron gain so reduction takes place in the cathode oxidation in the anode should reduction takes place in the cathode there will be gain of electron should oxidation takes place in the anode there will be loss of electron of course lastly uh it allows i mean second to the last allows electron into the that's what we've just said all right gain of electron loss of electron and the lastly is that current leaves the electrolyte if electron is entering the electrolyte through a particular electrode then current will leave the electrolyte through that particular so it's true that you have a complete and balanced reaction All right so we're done with electrode the next thing we should talk about is electrolytes is what electrolytes is what electrolytes 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 we've talked about that earlier before now but in a more formal way electrolytes are chemical substances that allow uh that allow electric current to pass through them and break down to give the corresponding ions electrolytes they are chemical substances that dissociate into its corresponding ions through the passage of what through the passage of electric current electrolytes chemical chemical what chemical substances chemical substances that's what that allow that allow electric current electric current direct current all right current to pass through them that decomp and decompose or the electric the chemical substance that decompose that decompose or that decompose decompose into corresponding ions through the passage 
through the passage of direct current. All right? Of course, there should be a molten or what? A chaos state. We've explained that. Electrolytes. So, electrolytes also have two types. Electrolytes also have two types. Just like electrodes, there are two types. There are two classes of electrolytes, which are termed the strong electrolytes. The strong what? Electrolytes. The strong what? Electrolytes. Strong what? Electrolytes. Just like we have strong acids, under acid base and salt, and strong bases. You know, electrolytes are decomposed, get decomposed when electric current pass through them. All right? Strong electrolytes decompose completely. Just like strong acids are substances that gives hydrogen ion when dissolved in water. The strong acids dissolve coming to produce hydrogen ion completely. The same way strong electrolytes decomposes completely. Weak electrolytes decomposes partially. All right? Examples of strong electrolytes are number one, the strong acids. All right? E.g., strong acids such as what? HCl. Strong acids such as what? H2SO4. And so on and so forth. All right? If this is an electrolyte, all right, and there's the connection or the passage of an electric current, you see this decompose into 2H plus and SO4 2 minus. It simply means that it is a strong electrolyte. We have part of the strong electrolytes to be strong acids. We have strong bases also. We have strong bases. Strong bases, e.g., Sodium hydroxide, right? Strong bases, potassium hydroxide, all right? And so on. In fact, calcium hydroxide also is a strong base. And the last example of what? Of what? Of, uh, of strong electrolytes is uh, ionic salts, ionic salts, or ionic compounds, ionic compounds, e.g., right, copper sulfates, sodium chloride, and so on and so forth. So these are what these are strong examples of strong electrolytes. Strong electrolytes. Why are they examples? Because they decompose completely when electric current is passed through them. This full added arrow shows that. It decomposes completely and it is a strong electrolyte. And then we have the weak electrolytes. We have what? The weak electrolytes. We have what? The weak electrolytes. The weak electrolytes. Those ones, like I said earlier on, do not decompose completely. Rather, they decompose partially when electric current is passed through them. Typical example include, like we said, strong acids, all right, weak acids, weak acids, e.g., uh, organic acids such as ethanoic acid, all right, ethanoic acid, all right, is an example of a weak electrolyte. Of course, it decomposes when electric current passes through it. However, it doesn't decompose completely. It doesn't decompose completely. All right, these two ways are uh, hard shows that it is what? It is a weak electrolyte. It is a weak electrolyte. All right, another example is strong bases are examples of strong electrolytes. Weak bases are also examples of uh, weak electrolytes, such as solution of ammonia. Solution of ammonia is a typical example then we have even water is a weak electrolyte water is a weak electrolyte water is a weak electrolyte all right then just a quick one you should also know 
what um what non-electrolytes are. These ones do not get decomposed even when electric current passes through them. They do not break down into anything. You should know what they are. And you should also know there are examples. Weak electro I mean known electrolytes. They do not get broken down. They do not get uh, decomposed when electric current passes through them. Organic compounds. All organic compounds are non-electrolytes, excluding organic acids. All organic uh, compounds are non-electrolytes. All organic compounds, benzene and so on and so forth, excluding the what phenol and so on and so forth, excluding what the organic acids. One, two. All right, all sugars, all sugars, whether cane sugar, sucrose, and the likes, they, they are covalent compounds, they are non electrolytes. Non electrolytes, non what? Electrolytes. Number one, all organic compounds, all organic what? Compounds, all organic compounds, excluding organic acids. Excluding organic acids. Number two, covalent compounds. Also, they are what? They are non electrolytes. They are non electrolytes. So you should know what examples, what uh, electrolytes are, and the typical or different examples that, we've, uh, that we have. We talk about electrolysis, we talk about electrode. We talked about electrolytes, electrolytic cell, electrolytic cell. That is the compartment, the vessel, right? That what that electrolysis takes place inside. It is made up of what the electrolytes. It is made up of the electrode. It is even made up of the battery that 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 supplies the electric current. One other thing that is very important as regards electrolytic cell. Is that it is the cell, the device that converts electric current into, I mean, electric uh, energy into chemical energy. You know, the electrolysis will take place. Chemical substances will break down by the passage of electric current. When the electric current is coming in, what the electric current will do is that it will be changed into chemical energy, electrical energy into chemical energy. That is what electrolytic cell is all about. That's the fourth one. The fifth one we're going to be talking about is the discharge. And the last one, as far as the key terms are concerned, discharge of ions. An electrolytic cell, all right, an electrolytic cell, ions are discharged. Ions are discharged. I think I remember something. Before doing this, we should also know the differences between electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Between electrolytes or between electrolytes and conductors. Between electrolytes and conductors. All right? Between electrolytes and conductors. We should know the difference between electrolytes and conductors. Conductors or even electrodes, electrolytes. Of course, you know both of them conduct electricity, all right? Allows electricity to pass through them, of course. But you know, number one, electrolyte has to be in molten. I've emphasized this or in solution, aqueous solution, aqueous. Solution, a cure solution. Why conductors or electrode has to be solid? Has to be solid. Has to be solid. Number two, when we were talking about uh, conductors, we talked about it has to do with what electrons, electrons or electric currents. Remember, it is a rod wire that allows the passage of what. Electrons or electric current inside or out out of the what electrolytes. So 
conductors has to do with uh, electrodes, while electrolytes has to do with ions. All right, ions. So you can say that uh, conduct electricity by two mobile ions. Conduct electricity through mobile. This guy, while this guy conduct electricity through electrons. Conduct electricity through what? Through ions. Right, so we move on quickly to the last part of what the definition of terms. To the last part of the what definition of terms, and that last part is actually what the last part is uh, discharge of ions, discharge of ions whenever, whenever. Electrolysis is performed, the electrolyte will definitely break down into their corresponding ions. Example of strong electrolyte that I gave you have been issue strong acids such as HCl. When you subject this guy in a liquid solution or in melting form into electrolysis, this is serving as an electrolyte, it's going to break down into hydrogen ion and Cl. Minus. All right. This guy, hydrogen ion, will migrate. Remember, we said we have a cathode in the electrolytic cell and an anode. This guy here will migrate to the cathode. When it migrates to the cathode, electrolysis is incomplete until and when an electron comes in place. I mean, connected to this what hydrogen ion to get discharged. So that's what discharged. So discharge of ions simply means ions becoming neutral, either by the gaining of electron or losing of electron. Cations will always gain electrons because they are positively charged ions. Anions, negatively charged ions, at the anode, this is what will happen. The Cl minus will migrate to the anode, all right? And form um, Cl plus E minus get discharged, right? Disinformed, right? Dissociates. That means you take it from being associating. You take these guys from their charge. You discharge them, right? You discharge them, right? You discharge them.